Hi folks, it's Andy. Welcome to Kendo Rant. Uh, I've got a lot of questions here. Before we get to them, don't forget to do all the like, share, subscribe, all that sort of thing. And uh, join the Kendo Show Early Access group. That's where lots of these questions are from. There's a link in the description below. And don't forget, if you like what I'm doing, if you like Kendo Rant, if you like uh, the Kendo Analysis video, there's a new one coming tomorrow. Uh, last one we did about uh, grading for fourth dan. Really good video. Go and check it out if you've not seen it already. Uh, and if you like Kendo Gamer, which is now a monthly episode that we do while I play video games and talk about Kendo, uh, then you need to shop at kendostar.com because <laughs> that's what supports me. That's what lets me do this. All right. So uh, if you like what I'm doing, uh, go and shop there. That's not the only reason to do that, though. It's a brilliant, 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 brilliant. Brilliant bug shop. <laughs> Best one in the world. And if you don't believe me, go and check the reviews. We're five star rated on Trustpilot, the only one in the world to have such a rating. So um, now that's out of the way, let's get to these questions. Uh, I'd just like to know more about Jigeko. I was told when facing seniors or sensei, we shouldn't attempt Ojiwaza and we should keep attacking with Shikakewaza with full spirit. Uh, in this case, how do lower grades practice Ojiwaza uh, when our normal training generally only uh, practices Kihon and Uchikomi Yeiko? Um, further to the previous question, my club is less Shi'ai focused, uh, which means we practice much less small cuts and Ojiwaza, but more basic big cuts and Kihonwaza. Uh, this leads to the fact that our Q grades result in Shi'ai normally not so great. Uh, can you advise how to improve and practice? Because I'd like to win if I'd like to win Shi'ai. Uh, yeah, no problem at all. Look, uh, I can kind of um, relate to this a little bit. Uh, like the you know the club I first started in was a little bit like that. Really like to focus on the kind of basic, uh, big, big waza sort of thing. Um, right. Let's let's start with the first thing. Right. So when you're uh, facing seniors or sensei, look, you have to distinguish really what a senior or a sensei is. If it's somebody that's, um, if you're a Q grade and it's somebody that's like, um, I'd say like second or third dan or above, um, then I think they fall into that that category um, of sort of senior sensei. Uh, anyone that's like second dan and below, um, I think uh, you can practice with a little bit differently. Um, <clears throat> and the reason for that is because the people of that level as well won't necessarily uh, sort of second down and below I'm talking about. They won't necessarily know exactly how to perform uh, what's called hikitate geiko, which is when you practice with the lower grade um, either. So they, they'd be probably doing something more of a normal geiko, what's really called gokaku geiko, where you practice with uh, uh, sort of a peer, as it were. Um, so look, yes, when you're facing those senior people, so let's say second down and above, um, or even third down and above, um, is probably a better uh, cutoff for that. Um, yes, you should focus on shikakewaza, positive strikes with full spirit. Um, and uh, interestingly, I watched a very good interview um, with Sumi Sensei. I think I posted it uh, on our blog, actually. Um, it was in English. And one of the things he said is you shouldn't do, uh, you should only do shikakewaza until you get fifth dan. <laughs> fifth dan. Yeah, and you should only do shikakewaza. Um, and I sort of know what he means by that. I don't think he means that super literally. It doesn't mean only. It should just be the main focus of your kendo. Um, and I definitely think that's the case. Um, and uh, yeah, when you're with your sensei or those senior people, you're definitely going to improve kendo more if you don't, because when you're doing kendo with those seniors, you're not supposed to be competing with them. You're not supposed to be trying to improve your ojiwaza. You're supposed to be training your spirit, trying to overcome your fear of being hit and develop stemi uh, and good uh, spirit. Yeah. Now, when you're practicing with the other people, the people who are second down and below, um, then you can do your Gokaku Geiko style Keiko, where it's a bit more competitive. Uh, you can try to make Ippon. Um, I mean, you should try to make Ippon, of course, with the with the Sensei. It's just it's a different strategy, right? Um, you can use that chance to experiment with the Ojiwaza, for example. And um, that's the time you'd want to do that. Um, in terms of uh, how to improve when the dojo is mainly focusing on the big kihon waza, that's fine. When you're doing your kihon and uchikomi, you do it nice and big, nice and straight. Um, that's that's going to help you improve anyway. Uh, lots of kirikaishi, nice, big, correct kirikaishi. And then when you do the keiko, the jigeiko, whether it's um, with whether you, whether it's with the the gokaku geiko style with the lower ranked people or with the senseis, then you can use a smaller waza. It's not really correct to use the big massive swings in jigeiko. 
um the the realistic ones are that that you use in kick or be the the sort of smaller swings um which are developed through practicing the large swings if though you practice with your sensei and he says no swing bigger then swing bigger when you're doing with the sensei when you're doing the keiko with your peers um then you can use the smaller smaller techniques um and don't worry too much about uh the results in shiai right they will come they will definitely definitely come all right even if they don't come whilst you're a kusha as you become a, a dan grade you start to uh, pass the dan exams you'll start to develop uh your ability in shiai as well all right so just uh do your best keep trying and uh especially when you're with your senseis uh do your best to uh do the positive keiko and i'm sure i'm sure you'll the success in shiai will follow Next one. Uh, hello, Andy. Can you explain if Dan gradings are somewhat harder in some places like Japan, Korea, USA, uh, in comparison to other countries? Um, I know that each country where there's a Kendall Federation affiliated to the FIK, they can award gradings up to seventh Dan. Uh, but in your imp opinion, is there any difference between a guy who took, exam for example, fifth Dan, uh, let's say uh, in a not so traditional country or country where Kendall's so popular, um, <clears throat> and one who took the same Dan grading uh, in Japan, uh, just for the sake of comparison. Uh, I'm pretty sure the FIK does courses uh, to the Federation members in order to uh, equalize the standard level on grading, but uh, in reality, is there a difference in taking the Dan grade in Japan or any other country? Okay, so look, um, obviously, Kendo is developed to a different extent or different stage in all different countries. Um, however, uh, in my opinion, the Dan grade system is pretty much, uh, it, it's very good, I think. It's, it's pretty equalized across the board. Now, it can be harder to pass those grades in some countries than others because um, the when you, when you take a Dan grading, you are placed in a category with other people who are also challenging that same grade. Uh, and for example, if you do a, a grade in Japan, it's possible, it's possible, depending on the grade, let's say fifth dan or sixth dan, uh, that you may have many other very skilled or very experienced opponents um, who are also going for that grade. However, if, uh, if you were to do that same grade in uh, say Europe or in uh, America or um, wherever else, uh, you might not have that same uh, average skill level within the group, if that makes sense. All right. Uh, <clears throat> however, the criteria for passing the grade is still the same. In answer to your question as to whether it's harder to pass the gradings in some countries than others, perhaps it is. Perhaps it is depending on the group of people that are taking the grade with you. However, having said that, if you take a fifth Dan from Japan, you take one from a European country, you take one from an, uh, a North American country, uh, one from a South American country, one from Oceania, and one, uh, Oceania, sorry, and one from um, like uh, Southeast Asia, and they're all fifth Dan. Um, in my experience, they're all about the same level. <laughs> uh, that doesn't seem to change um, for me. Um, to some extent, a little bit sometimes in, uh, yeah, in lower grades in Japan. I think I think they are. I think they are much a, a little bit more lenient, like on sort of IQ Shodan, probably Nidan uh, in Japan than they are in many other countries. Um, because it's usually kids that they're deal dealing with, so they're a little bit more eager to pass them. Uh, whether that's right or wrong, I don't know. But otherwise, you know, you take a third Dan, take a fifth Dan, take a sixth Dan, take a seventh Dan from any country in the world, and for me, they're generally about, you know, obviously within that, there's different skill levels as well, you know what I mean? But I've never seen somebody that's got like, you know, seventh Dan outside of Japan, that like couldn't have seventh dan in Japan as well, yeah. Um, because even in Japan, there's a big variance between the abilities of seventh dan. <laughs> if that makes sense too, right? I'm not saying that all seventh dan's are the, of equal ability because that's not the case either. Um, or all sixth dan's are, or all fifth dan's are, or even all first dan's are. It's a bit of a complicated uh, subject.
Um, so I think we'll move on now. <laughs> Next one. Uh, is there a specific place where an embroidery for a dojo lo logo can be on the sleeve of a kendogi? Which side should it be? And should it be left, uh, left, right, or any? All right, so I brought a kendogi of mine. Um, basically, the normal place you would put that sort of thing is on the left sleeve. Like, this is mine here. Uh, I've dropped my questions on the floor, but if I put it on, you can see it's here on the left sleeve. Yeah? It's my brilliant Kiyoi Kendogi. Love this Kendogi. It's well good. Really light, really comfortable. Um, and yeah, it goes there on the left sleeve. Doesn't that look awesome? <laughs> right. Okay, next one. Um, <laughs> uh, Hello, I've transferred to a new dojo this month and my sensei is fourth dan and he instructs me repeatedly to hold uh, my shinai more tightly in order to avoid being controlled by my opponent. However, my previous sensei, who is fifth dan, told me only if I take hold of this uh, shinai gently can I make good tenuchi uh, to do semi and avoid being controlled. I guess both of them are right, but which am I supposed to follow? Okay, so it's obviously very hard for me to see to give you this advice without seeing your actual kendo because it really depends. I'm going to take this kendo off now because it's a little bit awkward. Um, <laughs> it depends really on um, what what your actual kendo is like. But look, let me tell you how you're supposed to hold the shinai. Let's, this is probably the easiest way. All right. You're supposed to grip it with these three fingers, your middle finger, your ring finger, and your little finger of your left hand. Right. The other two, they wrap around it gently all right like this okay and you hold it as if you're shaking hands with somebody like that on top then the right hand goes by the tsuba and it grips it in a similar way but much lighter all right but these three keep tight you hold this tight all right and the rest are nice and relaxed that way you can use the left hand to control the direction of the shinai lightly all right you don't want to hold it tight with your right hand whatever you do you do that someone's going to bash it and it's going to easily get out of the way when you try to swing it you're not going to be able to swing it straight or freely your hits aren't going to be accurate and you're not going to be able to do tenuchi <clears throat> with any real effect so grip it nice and tight with the bottom three fingers wrap the others uh, nice and loosely around it then you bring all the fingers together not by the tuba again as if you're shaking hands with somebody Nice and loosely around it, but not open and not with your finger sticking up like this towards the tuba, all right? The fingers should be together, all right? You don't want to be doing this sort of stuff or, or this sort of stuff that I see people doing. The, the fingers should be together because you, as if you were wearing the kote, right? Then you're able to swing the shinai because you've got it held tightly here. You're able to control it. And the final minute, you bring the shinai down with your left hand. And the final minute, you squeeze all your fingers together, particularly these three at the same time. Pam, like that. Put energy as you strike and then you instantly relax again. Okay, that's how you want to do it. <laughs> um, and I'm pretty sure, as you can see, there's parts where it should be tense and parts where it should be relaxed. And that's where there's probably been a little bit of a mix up between what you were told in the first place and what we, you were told after that. Next one. <clears throat> Is it okay to wear a brightly colored, ten, uh, sorry, a brightly colored door during testing? Uh, it feels like it's too showy. Similar to wearing a white 10 degree, should we have to wear a white, a black door? <laughs> okay, so I've, I've commented on this a little bit because I've talked about this on this show a few times now. <sighs> right, one. You can wear whatever color door you like, right? I don't care if it's bright pink, bright yellow, orange, purple, green, blue, whatever, all right? It's got nothing to do with your ability to pass a grading, all right? And if a grading panel marks you down because of the color of your door, they're looking at the wrong thing, yeah? It's, they just shouldn't be doing that. You should, and it, you know, even if, one of the things I hate the most is when people say, oh, you shouldn't wear a colored door. It's too flashy. You should only be allowed to wear that when you're like a really good. It should match your ability. It's total nonsense. It's rubbish. It's elitist. And it's just wrong. Yeah. If you're doing that, you're doing Kendall wrong. Yeah. So don't say that to people because it's rubbish. Um, I've never seen or heard of that sort of thing in Japan. It's total nonsense. People wear whatever color they want and they wear it to gradings. They wear it to Shi'ai. Uh, and nobody judges them for it, because why would you judge somebody for that? Like, that's not what Kendo's supposed to be about. Um, and that that goes through to uh, gradings as well. I've never worn a black door in a Kendo grading, all right? Never, all right? And I've done uh, well, I've done six Dan gradings now. I've passed them all, and I've never worn a black door. And I've worn all sorts of different colored ones. I've worn a different colored one almost at every single grading, almost. Um, 
not at every single one, but the last few I've, I've definitely worn different colors. I've worn brown ones, yellow ones, blue ones, gold ones, uh, brown ones again. I think I said brown ones. <laughs> I've got a couple of brown ones. Yeah, uh, red ones, but I've never worn a black one. All right, uh, so you don't have to wear a black one for your grading. Um, if you want to, you can. <laughs> Don't forget that too. You can wear whatever color you want. And the same goes for Tenegree. You don't have to wear, wear a, a white Tenegree for your grading. Um, you can if you want. And if you look at uh, videos in Japan of people grading, yeah, look, most of them wear white Tenegree because most Tenegree in Japan are white. Most Tenegree in Japan are white. I'll say that again. Yeah, because people don't collect Tenegree in the same way we do. Uh, we, don't, we often treat them as collectibles. I mean, I've got loads and loads of different colored ones, loads of cool designs and stuff, because I think they're awesome. And I think it's great before practice to kind of have a nice uh, looking Tenegree to wear. Um, but you don't, you, you know, you don't, you don't have to wear a white one. And I even posted on this, I posted a screenshot of a seventh and grading of people lining up and they've all got a different colored tenegree on. So it's just like the door color thing. You don't need to be judging people based on the color of the tenegree. Uh, next one. I'd like to ask you if there was ways to deal with stress before competition, how to warm up before competition and what to eat before. I've never found res resources for that through Kendall, but in Japan, surely they have some material about it. There's no material about that in Japan. No way. Never heard anything. However, look, here's how I deal with stress before competition. I try my best just to remember that. Um, and I've been, I've competed at lots of different levels now. It, it, it's hard to deal with stress, but what I try to do is try to remember as much as I can that the worst that can happen, right? I try to picture the worst that can happen. The worst that can happen is that I'll lose the match. Um, I'll come off disappointed. Uh, I'll have something to learn from. Um, and I'll have, you know, maybe I'll have made a mistake or whatever, but the worst that's happened is I'm, the worst that happens is I'm going to lose one Shi. All right. I've lost loads of Shi, and I'm going to lose a lot more. Um, everybody loses the sh some shi, you know, um, and it's easy because what happens, it's easy to get stressed because you think, oh, if I lose, then people are going to think I'm rubbish at this or people are going to laugh at me or people are going to think that I'm not very good at kendo. Uh, nobody thinks that. Nobody thinks that, you know, some of the best players uh, in the world have lost in the first round of loads of different tournaments and nobody was like, oh, that guy's rubbish. You know, nobody does that. All right. Um, People aren't going to judge you like that. And the people that do, they, they again, like the people that are judging you for your door color, they're kendoing wrong. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're not going to die. You're not going to hurt yourself, hopefully. But, you know, you won't be hurt because you lose. It's not like boxing or something where you get your face bashed in. Um, you know, um, you'll just have a bruised ego. So you have to just remember that, all right? And try it. That hopefully will take a bit of the weight off. Um, warming up, I do a little bit of stability, a bit of stretching, whatever makes you feel good. Um... And in terms of what to eat before, anything you like and put yourself at ease. Yeah, don't don't go eating something crazy like you know, like a I don't know, like a super hot curry or something. That could that could end in disaster. Um, <laughs> don't want to do that. Um, or anything like don't go nuts on like Red Bull or something like that either, because that's not a good idea. It's not good for you. All right. Uh, last one. When is the Japan uh, the Japan English Dictionary due back in stock on Kendo Star? Uh, when it comes back in stock with the Zen Ken Nen, the Zen Nihon Kendo Renmei, the All Japan Kendo Federation are out of stock. Um, I'm waiting on them to get it back in stock, and then we'll have it back in stock. And that's it. I can't say any more than that. I'm afraid. That's it for today. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, don't forget to shop at Kendo Star. Like, share, subscribe. Join the Kendo Show Early Access Group. I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.